In this video we're going to talk about ladder safety. Ladders are, well I should say ladders and stairs, but most of our focus is going to be on ladders. Uh, ladders are safe tools if they are used correctly and if workers remain focused, but if they're not used correctly and or workers aren't uh, uh, don't have good situational awareness, aren't being careful when they're on the ladder, you know, serious accidents can occur. Uh, I'm going to start with a video clip to give you a, an illustration of the kinds of incidents that can occur if workers aren't being focused. So let's, let me go ahead and do this. only have a limited number that we can ship out right now because it is very, very popular. We're going to go to the phones. Hi, you're on the air with Lisa and Kevin. What's your name? Hi, Lisa. It's Renee from California. Hey, Renee. Chris is over there kind of, kind of giving us a look at how to use the ladder there. i got to tell you something. I have this ladder. It mm -hmm. is awesome. Oh, now what and is everybody it wants, Everybody wants this ladder. I live in an apartment with um, vaulted ceiling. Uh-oh. Okay, we're going to make sure that Chris is okay. And that has never happened. Well, you know... It's now, I think Chris needs to be drug tested, alcohol tested. I think he might have had a couple of drinks before he got on that ladder. Um, but, you know, all, all kidding aside, those are the types of incidents that can occur if workers aren't focused on what they're doing. It wasn't the ladder's fault. The ladder setup was fine. He just got a little bit of got in a little bit of a hurry coming down the ladder and missed a rung. Very common type of incident that occurs when ladders are in use. Probably, I'm thinking here. I, I think the I think it has to be the the most uh, serious ladder incident I ever worked with was a worker who missed a rung. He ended up falling because he missed the rung and his, his knee was obliterated. He had to have reconstructive surgery to his knee. Now the gentleman that just fell in the video, potential concussion, um, other types of injuries can occur. He's on a nice smooth uh, level surface, uh, not like what you run into in a lot of job sites, a lot of uh, work environments. He had a perfect uh, area for setting up and using the ladder. He just lost focus for just a second. But let's go ahead and move on. I'm going to say a little bit about the regulations, OSHA regulations. There are OSHA regulations for general industry and construction. Um, I'm going to be focusing mostly on construction regulations. And again, I'm not going to talk a lot about regulations because you know how I feel about regulations. Uh, but if you would like to read the regulations, I will provide links to the general industry regulations. Here are two general industry links here. I will provide these links along with uh, links to the construction regulations in Blackboard. And if you have any questions uh, about those regulations, please let me know. 
remember it's not about the regulations it's about going above and beyond the regulations and uh, the safe use of ladders you can use ladders uh, you can be in compliance with the ladder regulations and still have unsafe work conditions that's why we need to go above and beyond the regulations um, ladders and stairs are a part of good access which we talked about in the previous unit on uh, uh, slips and trips uh, good access what we're talking about is making it easy for the workers to travel around the job site easy and safe to move around the job site eliminating trip hazards eliminating muddy, muddy and slippery surfaces uh, work uh, travel areas that are wide enough for the traffic that will be passing through those areas uh, no goat trails I didn't talk about goat trails specifically uh, in the previous video I probably should have uh, uh, what we mean by goat trail is just a trail that's been created by workers usually it's as a shortcut yeah, they don't want to go the long way so they'll cut across some rough terrain or cut across an unsafe area and they'll create this goat trail uh, watch out for goat trails when it comes to access uh, wheelchair uh, the wheelchair standard we did talk about good access will make our companies more efficient more productive and more safe fewer injuries and ladders and stairs are a part of good access uh, here's an example uh, on one of my jobs in Colorado with the subcontractor the subcontractor it was a fight to get them to understand the importance of providing good access for the workers workers had to go from a lower level to an upper level and they were just having workers create this goat trail up this slope and then they go up and down the slope it wasn't safe now what we see here is me watching <laughs> me watching them uh, as they improve the the access to these between these different areas what they're doing is is uh, is excavating out an area uh, an area where they will put a portable stair system in uh, the portable stair system that they're putting in uh, I'll show you some examples in some of our uh, slides that are coming up but a portable stair system is probably the best fix for these environments ladders really don't don't work on slopes but a portable stair system or conditioning the slope or making changes to the slope that uh, make it safer that create steps in the slope um, now this is if you're in my industrial hygiene class I talked about work surfaces that will wear out knees and ankles with repeated long-term exposure this is the kind of surface that will wear out a worker over years and years of exposure to the, these types of, of surfaces uh, there can also be immediate types of incidents as well slips and trips sprained ankles uh, because of these types of work surfaces one thing we do as safety managers we try to to work with supervisors to eliminate these kinds of work surfaces and here are a couple of examples of what you can do on slopes the picture on the right you've seen uh, we saw that in the previous a unit that's a good fix now what they're doing over here they're actually going to use what we call an adjust the stair which I'll show you picture pictures of in a second now what they have here they could have done this they could have done what we have over here on the right uh, what we have on the left with the walk with the cleated walk board uh, really wouldn't have worked in that uh, in that previous work environment cut because it's, it's too steep this is too steep for this um, uh, corrective action but it would this corrective action would work but these are the kinds of improvements we're looking to make um, it, and it's not just about safety it's also about productivity and efficiency um, a recent article talking more about ladders now a recent article by the national national safety council indicated that 81 percent of all fall injuries in construction are related to ladders and like i said previously ladders are safe tools if they're used properly 
but there are a lot of incidents that involve ladders that aren't used properly. Uh, one of the things we might consider uh, recommending as a safety manager is finding an alternative to ladders. Uh, if we can eliminate the use of ladders, that's going to make our workplace safer. Some options that could eliminate the need for ladders would be stairways, aerial lifts, and scaffolds. Those would be safer options. But sometimes a ladder is the only option and they can be used safely if they're used correctly. And I'm gonna show you a lot of pictures of incorrect ladder usage before we're done with this unit. Uh, here are some uh, regulations that tell us when we are required to have a stairway or ladder. When do we need a ladder, step, or a stair in our work environment? Anytime there is a break in elevation of 19 inches or more. What does that mean? Anytime workers have to step up or step down 19 inches or more, there needs to be a step, a ladder, a stair in place to help them make that transition more safely. Uh, another consideration when using ladders, if you have a lot of workers on your job site or in your facility, you may need two or more ladders or stair systems to accommodate all of the workers that are using, uh, that are using uh, those ladders or stairs. And the regulation specifically says two or more ladders are needed if the access point is used by 25 or more workers. By access point, we're talking ladders or stairs that are moved or that are used to, to move from a lower level to an upper level and then back again. This is a, a classic example of a work environment where a step or ramp is needed. This is more than the 18 inches, or this is 19 inches or more. Uh, a step, a ramp, stairs, something is needed here to make it safer for these workers. Uh, what this worker was doing, he was traveling back and forth repeatedly throughout the workday, carrying buckets, five gallon buckets of grout, uh, which a grout is a masonry material. It's concrete without, without, the, without the aggregate. Uh, it's, it's mortar, uh, another way, another term for what he was carrying back and forth. He was carrying these five gallon buckets back and, back and forth. He was stepping down, and then when he needed to go back and get more at the mixing location, he would step up. So difficult for the worker, so and very likely to result in an accident. Uh, uh, the easy fix is just to provide a step. You don't need an entire stair system. You don't need an entire ladder. All you need is to build a step that will make it easier and safer for the worker to make this transition. And that's what was done in this location. This was my very first company within the first couple of months, a company that had no safety culture. They didn't know what the heck they were doing. They were just by the seat of their pants, not thinking about safety at all. Um, and the, this is one of those teaching moments that I ran into a lot with that first company, especially for the first couple of years. Hey guys, think about it. Is this safe? How can we make it safer? A common, two common questions I would ask. Is this as safe as it could be? How can we make it more safe for the workers? What you don't want to do here is go in yelling and cussing and chewing people out. That's not going to be effective. Uh, discuss the circumstances with them. Ask them again those two questions. And for the third time, uh, is this as safe as it could be? How could we make it more safe? But yeah, this is in violation of those OSHA regulations, but more importantly, it's not safe. Uh, and it, you don't need an OSHA regulation uh, to, for us to know that that's not a, a good uh, situation here that we see uh, this worker in. This is an example of a stair system that you can place along a slope. And we'll talk more about these types of adjustable stairs, portable stairs, in another slide as we're coming up. But right now, just a, a few regulations pertaining to stairs. Stairs should be set up at a 30 to 50 degree slope. 
our treads, our steps need to be level. It can be anywhere from 30 to 50 degrees, but when we're setting these up, they need to be level. We need to put a level on these. And you d don't have to put a level on every step. If it's a system like this, you have one of the steps level, then the other steps are going to, to more than likely be level also. But you need to level these up when they're being set up. The riser height and tread depth need to be uniform. They need to be the same for each step. Riser height, we talked about that in the previous uh, unit, is the distance from one step to another step. That distance right there, that's the riser height. Then the tread depth is the distance from the front of the step to the back of the step. Needs to be the same for all your steps. And again, with this type of unit, it's not going to be a problem. Uh, now, if you have uh, job-built stair systems, uh, it, it can be an issue where whoever built the stairs wasn't paying enough attention to maintaining the uniformity of the stairs. Uh, if you're using any kind of landings, a landing is a transition point at the top of a stairs. If they're metal pan landings, they must be secured in place. The treads must be secured in place. And this is one of those OSHA regulations I kind of shake my head. Yeah, of, co of course they need to be secured in place to be safe. But there have been accidents because of stair systems where some of the components were not secured in place. If a tread or a step is not secured in place, someone steps on it, it slips out of position, somebody falls. Same thing with the landing areas at the top of the stair system that needs to be secured. Again, everything needs to be secured and stable is really what this regulation is referring to. On some, in some workplaces, uh, temporary stair towers are used to provide access from a lower level to an upper level. This is an elaborate uh, stair tower. It provides access from the ground level all the way up to the top level. Uh, these systems are usually going to be assembled by a subcontractor. They must be assembled by what we call a qualified person, meaning they know what they're doing. They have the training, the skill, the experience, the knowledge, and so on to do it correctly. Uh, yeah. Companies that do scaffolding will also normally do stair towers. So if you are in a workplace where a stair tower and scaffolding uh, or, scare, or t stair tower, towers and scaffolding are needed, uh, it's a good practice, I think, uh, to hire a subcontractor to make sure that it's set up correctly. Now they do need to be inspected and approved by a professional engineer before they are used. Uh, once they're uh, inspected and approved by a professional engineer before use, once they're in use, they need to be inspected daily. And for a lot of the different inspections that we do as safety managers, we'll use a green tag, a red tag system. Uh, the green tag will tell us that, the, that it has been inspected and it's safe for use. If it's red tagged, that means it's not safe for use and it shouldn't be used. Uh, similar to what we, we saw when we talked about lockout tagout uh, earlier in the semester. Uh, some more regulations related to stairways. Uh, a handrail is needed if our stair has four risers or is 30 inches tall. You know, whichever is less, four risers or 30 inches. Over here in this picture, this is a a section of stair that needs a handrail to be in compliance with OSHA because we have we have one two three four five six risers and it's easily more than 30 inches again it's four risers or 30 inches whichever is less once you get to that point you have to put a handrail if it was three risers let's say the stair stopped here one, two, three, so let's say it stopped here, you wouldn't need a handrail as long as the top, uh, as long as it was less than 30 inches. 
But I think it's best practice. Anytime you have a stair, go ahead and, and put up a handrail. It doesn't, it doesn't take that much more time. It's not that much more expensive. The handrail must be at least 36 inches tall. Uh, needs a mid rail and some type of intermediate uh, uh, intermediate rails. It could be a mesh screen. It could be balusters. A lot of different options. It could be a it could be a mid rail like we have with a standard guardrail system. Now notice uh, standard guardrail system. The minimum height is 39 inches for a stair rail. It, the minimum height is 36 inches. But if you do 39 inches, you're fine. At least 36 inches. And I would probably encourage, I would probably train my workers that, that I'm responsible for. Let's go ahead and build it to the same dimensions as we build our guardrail systems. You know, 39, 42 inches in that range. But the regulations say at least 36 inches. Now for our uh, mid rail, uh, for the intermediate, uh, intermediate uh, structures that we have. I mean, we have our top rail, then we have our mid rail or vertical members. If you're using balusters, the vertical members, there should be no opening greater than 19 inches according to the regulations. Now you've seen this picture before and I use it a lot just as a reminder. Uh, this is more of a safety management issue. Safety management, project management. Uh, drop the ball on this. This should have been taken out of service and repaired immediately. As soon as that hole started to develop, it should have been fixed. It went on for months and it wasn't corrected until a worker stepped in it and broke his leg. Uh, still irks me to this day that uh, it took a broken leg for to get people to fix this. These are the types of little things, and they're not little things, but we think of them. A lot of workers think of them as little things. These are the types of little things that if we ignore them, people get hurt because of them. Would have been an easy fix. Uh, Three-quarter inch plywood, uh, you know, some, some sheet metal until you can get it repaired properly. Uh, something to cover that hole until it can be, can be repaired properly and permanently. Now here are some other examples of adjustable stairs that are really good options to replace ladders uh, in different work environments. Uh, they are expensive. They can run $1,500 to $4,500, but that's generally going to be less than an emergency room visit. It's going to be less than an OSHA citation. Uh, these, these types of units are great. We used them a lot at Key Whip when we needed them. Uh, they're, they're heavier than a portable ladder, but they work a lot like a portable ladder. The handrails fold down, the treads fold up, it folds up flat, and it can be carried by two men most of the time, or two workers most of the time. The bigger units, you may have to have more than two people because of the weight, but they are a great uh, alternative. Again, this ladder here is not nearly as safe as this adjustable stair system. And I do have a video I want to show you. Bear with me as I, as I play this video. Yeah, some real good examples of how this type of uh, stair system can be used. And it's not just for construction. It could also be used in general industry work environments where a temporary stair is needed. Much better than a ladder. And traditionally, these different uh, applications or these different circumstances, you'd have a ladder, much better than a ladder. Can't do that with a ladder. Much more efficient, much safer.
Yeah, these are relatively new, uh, a new development in the in industry. Uh, these adjust to stair systems. And there are different companies that manufacture and market uh, the systems. Uh, as a safety manager, uh, if you see a need for this in your workplace, you could do some shopping, make recommendations to your management, to your supervisors. And, uh, I, and this is one of those improvements where you really want to hit on the improved uh, efficiency and productivity. Much more productive, much more efficient than walking up and down a ladder to get from a lower level to an upper level. Workers are gonna get more done and they're gonna get it done more safely. Um, another thing that you might consider when you're working as a safety manager is finding your local ladder supplier. There are companies that specialize just in ladders. Uh, locally in Tulsa, there's a, there's a store or a company called Ladders of Tulsa. That's all they do is ladders and they can help you with uh, they can help you find the ladders that you need for maybe a difficult application. You know, not any ladder is going to work just anywhere. They can help you find the right ladder for your specific application. They would also, um, they would also be able to uh, sell you the adjust to stair type systems. They, they handle those also. So something to keep in mind if you end up working in Kansas City, Dallas, Denver, find your local ladder supplier and work with them and they can help you get what you need for your work environment. Uh, ladder anatomy. Let's talk about it. Most of you guys have worked with ladders before you know the basic anatomy, uh, but I just want to review it because I will be talking about rails and rungs and lock assemblies and uh, safety feet and so on. Uh, as we continue talking more about ladders. And this is your typical uh, extension ladder. Rungs are the steps on the ladder. Rails are the side supports or the side structures that support the rungs. Your rails run from the lower level all the way up to your upper level. The rungs um, uh, and well, we'll talk more about rungs and some requirements for rungs as we go along, but those are the main two uh, components that I'll be referring to as we continue our discussion of ladders, uh, the rails and the rungs. I'll also mention lock assemblies. Then we have, this is an extension ladder, so we have the extension uh, mechanism made up of a rope and a pulley. Uh, the feet of the ladder, I use, they call it a safety shoe, I usually just call it the feet. Uh, these are very important for a ladder, helping to maintain its stability. Um, and that, that's really pretty much it as far as what we need to, to be aware of when it comes to ladder anatomy. Uh, step ladders, slightly different. Uh, step ladders are designed to be used only in an open position. In an open position, the spreader assembly will be fully deployed and locked into position. Uh, most step ladders only have one side for climbing. This is a common mistake, and we'll talk about this more. But you'll see workers trying to climb this side of the ladder. That side is not for climbing on most step ladders. Uh, there are exceptions, but most step ladders, there's only one side that's safe for climbing. And instead of rungs, we have steps. Uh, steps are step ladders are better ladders if you need to work from a ladder because the steps provide a better, uh, better, better foot placement, more stable foot placement. Uh, the top cap, this is not a step. This is not a step, it's the top cap. Common mistake you'll see, and we'll, I'll have some pictures of it coming up, workers use the top cap as a step. They will stand up on top of that top cap to increase their reach, and that's not okay. A lot of accidents occur. And we'll talk about one accident in particular that I'm aware of where a worker standing on the top cap fell and was seriously injured. Um, and the feet again are important for providing a stable foundation for the ladder. And I think that pretty much covers it. Again, we have step ladder, we have extension ladder. Now another type of ladder similar to an extension ladder is what we call straight ladder. A straight ladder 
is what we have here, but it doesn't extend. It just has one section and it has a fixed height or a fixed length. The extension ladder can has multiple sections and it can be extended to different lengths. And this is going to be what you commonly see in the workplace would be an extension or a step. But you might also see straight ladders that are like extension ladders, but they don't extend. They, they're just a fixed section. Uh, when choosing ladders, make sure you choose a strong enough ladder. These are the different ANSI strength ratings for ladder types. The strongest ladder, the 1AA, is designed for construction or what we call rough duty, where the, the ladder is going to be thrown around, banged around, it's, gonna, it's, going to, to be, uh, it's going to be abused in some ways. With a 1AA type of ladder, it has a rated load capacity of 375 pounds. These are all pounds that we have for load capacity. The 1A, also commonly used in construction, 300 pounds is the max load capacity. Uh, you'll also see a type 1 ladder used in construction and general industry, um, uh, 250 pounds. And then we have uh, the type 2 and the type 3 that you should never see in an industrial operation. You should never have a type 2 or a type 3 in any business. Uh, these are for around the house. This is for around your household. This is maybe around your farm or maybe maybe you do some carpentry work on the side. You can get by with a 225 pound capacity ladder. My recommendation, my best practice, is that we shouldn't use anything less than a type 1A. Type 1A or type 1AA should be the minimum that's used in, in industry. Those are going to be the, the most durable, the sturdiest, the safest ladders, the 1A and the 1AA. And I also recommend, it's not required by OSHA, but that we use ladders that have fiberglass rails. You can get ladders that are aluminum, that have aluminum construction, aluminum rails, or you can get ladders that have fiberglass rails. The fiberglass rails are preferable because fiberglass is not electrically conductive like aluminum or other metal. Uh, wooden ladders are also a possibility, but you don't hardly see wooden ladders anymore. Most of the ladders that are available for purchase are going to be fiberglass or aluminum, and fiberglass is the way to go. These 1A and 1AA ladders, they're going to be fiberglass. They're going to have fiberglass rails. Now the, the lighter duty uh, ladders like we have down here, that's where you're more likely to see the aluminum construction. Uh, back to some OSHA regs. Ladders must support four times their intended load. 3.3 uh, for type 1A. Just go ahead and go with four times the intended load. Uh, if, you, if, you're, if you have a, uh, a type 1A ladder, go ahead and go with four times the intended load. Make sure that it will that you're not loading it in excess of what it should be loaded. Ladders, rungs, cleats, steps must be parallel, level, and uniformly spaced. Rungs must be spaced 10 to 14 inches apart. And the rungs must be at least 10 and a half inches wide. Ladders that you purchase from Ladders of Tulsa or another ladder supplier or Lowe's they are going to meet all these requirements. This is really <laughs> information that's not that useful because the ladders that are available for, for purchase are going to meet these requirements. But I throw them out there because they are in the OSHA regulations. Uh, step ladders uh, must have spreader or locking devices. Um, when using two ladders to reach an elevated structure, or destination, there must be a platform or landing between the ladders. You can't tie two ladders together to increase their length. And here's what we mean by a platform or landing. You have one ladder that goes up as far as it will go, and then you have a landing, a platform, and then you have another ladder that goes up as high as it will go. Uh, 
if landings are used, they need to be treated like a, a work platform. There needs to be a handrail and a tow board for uh, the landing areas. So you'd want your tow board, then your top rail and your mid rail and your end supports for that landing area. Ladders must extend three feet above the landing area. Uh, an exception does exist if the ladder is tied off and a grab rail is installed. It doesn't, it's not required to extend three feet above the landing. Ladder should only be used for intended purposes, uh, not as a scaffold platform, not as a work bridge. And I'll have some pictures coming up uh, illustrating some different do's and don'ts with ladders. Set up at a one to four slope, meaning uh, one foot back from the wall for every four feet of height. Again, also pictures to illustrate. I'll have pictures to illustrate most all of these points uh, before we're done with this unit. Ladders need to be set up on a stable and level surface. If ladders are set up in an area where they could be knocked over or ran into or displaced, that area must be secured or barricaded. You must have something set up to keep forklifts from running into the ladders or to keep other workers from bumping into the ladders. You don't want a forklift hitting a ladder knocking it over with a worker on top of it. And like I said before, if possible, uh, not always possible, other options might be better than ladders. Scaffolds, aerial lifts, for example, are most of the time, if it works, going to be better than a ladder. Uh, this is um, an add-on that we can put on store-bought store ladders that allows safer access from the ladder to the landing area, to the roof, or whatever it is we're climbing onto. Uh, these are called bunny ears. They cost about 150 bucks. They attach to the ends of the ladder rails. We have ladder rail here and a ladder rail here. These slide right over those rails. And the advantage of this device is that workers don't have to swing a leg out over the side of the ladder when getting on and off the ladder. They can step right through the top of the ladder. And there are a lot of businesses, a lot of companies that require uh, these walk-through extensions on their, on their property. Uh, Key Whip uh, required the use of bunny ears on all ladders. Uh, if you're not gonna use bunny ears, you can build a job-built ladder that has a built-in walk-through. That's what we have here. They have a built-in walkthrough. Um, also, they have really good ladder security. They have it attached at the top and at the base of the ladder, so that ladder is not going to slide out of position. Uh, the area around the top and bottom of the ladder must be kept clear. Both rails must be supported equally by the structure that it's leaned against. The top of the step ladder shall not be used as a step. That top cap shall not be used as a step. Do not climb on the bracing side of a step ladder unless it's designed for climbing. The bracing side is that side that I mentioned previously in the picture that should not be climbed. That's just there to support the A-frame ladder. And that's another term for that type of ladder, uh, step ladder or A-frame ladder. I'm going to go ahead and stop here. Uh, we're going to break this into uh, two, uh, two videos. The next video, we're going to look at a lot of pictures that will illustrate the proper use or misuse of ladders in the workplace. Uh, and it will, it will reinforce a lot of these regulations that we've been talking about.